When looking at applications of integration, it can get very complicated and messy. We are going to be looking at a couple of applications, but we're not going to be very strict on the mathematical rigor of proving where the formulas come from. We're going to be looking at more of an intuitive understanding of where these formulas come from and what we are doing. So to remind you, when you were first introduced to definite integrals and finding areas between a curve and the x-axis, if I've got a positive function, what we looked at is we started off with slicing this area into n pieces and we calculated the area of each block but we looked at it as rectangles. And we added them all together. So we added all those areas together. So we've said it's the sum where i goes from 1 to n of the area of the rectangle. Now the width of this rectangle is xi, whatever, or delta of xi, the change of x, the height of the rectangle for any arbitrary value inside that rectangle. We calculate the y value. So it's length times breadth, so it's f of xi for each of those rectangles times the width, which we can say is delta x. It can be a cons constant width of delta x or variable width. But what we are doing is to calculate the area under the curve. That is where we start. Then we say, well, to get a more accurate area, we make more and more rectangles. So in the end, we look at the limit as n tends to infinity of the sum of all these areas. And that gets us to the exact area under the curve. And that is how the definite integral was defined, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. Now we're going to use a similar idea. Yet again, we're not going to be very strict with the mathematical rigor or where everything comes from, but we're going to get more of an intuitive understanding link it, linked to this understanding we have for finding the area under the curve. So let's look at some basic shapes first before we get started. There's a cylinder, a rectangular prism, a square-based pyramid, a sphere, cone. Each of them have different measurements. We've got a radius r, the height h. Now we say height, but we threw the, pyramid, the cylinder on its side. A sphere with radius r. And we've got formulas here for their volumes. A cone with radius r and perpendicular height h. And these are all formulas. Now, these formulas can all be proven with calculus. We can use calculus to get to derive these formulas and we're going to do that for some of them. Not for all of them, it gets a bit tedious, but we're going to look at a technique to get, the, get to these formulas. Now the tetrahedron is quite challenging. But we're going to be looking at some of them. So we're going to use the same process we've had now to find volumes of shapes. So let's get started by looking at the two types of shapes we get. We get a shape that has a constant cross section, meaning if I chop it into little pieces, and that's what we're going to do, we're going to slice it. Every slice has the same, the face of every slice has the same area in this case. It's a circle with radius r, whatever it is, so the area of that slice is going to be pi r squared. Whereas if I've got a shape with a varying cross section, so when we do these slices, we slice it, every time we get the same shape, the face is the same shape, but the size changes. So these are the two things we're looking at. So these are the shapes we're going to look at. One with a constant cross section, which becomes very straightforward, and one with a varying cross section. Now with the constant cross section, using what we had earlier, to find this area, we're just going to add together all the areas of the slices. So this area, the volume of this whole thing is all the little bits added together. So the volume is the limit as n tends to infinity of the sum where i goes from 1 to n of the area of each one of those for xi. But now they're all the same, so it's pi r squared times delta x, because that's the width. So it's the area of all of these we're adding together. So that gives us the integral from 0 to h, 
because our height is h of this cylinder that we toppled over onto its side, of pi r squared dx. And that gives me pi r squared x between h and 0, which is pi r squared h. So that's the volume of a cylinder, and that wasn't very complicated. But now if we look at the other shapes, we've got a variant cross-section. If I look at the area of one slice, that depends on where I am, what my x value is. So the volume for this one is going to be limit as n tends to infinity, the same process of the sum where i goes from 1 to n of the area of xi. So each xi's area, or we can call it xi star, where I choose the xi in each of the sections, delta x. So that'll be the integral from a to b of the area of x. dx. So what we then need to know is what is this area with reference to the x value where I am on the Cartesian plane. So let's look at a square-based pyramid. Before we can look at a square-based pyramid, we're just going to look at some background you should have. If I've got triangles, similar triangles is a concept you hopefully have seen before. If I've got the perpendicular height here, with that point is S, that point is H, then I know triangle ABC is similar to ADE and ABH is similar to ADS. And that gives us the ratios that AB over AD is equal to AC over AE is equal to BC over DE. You might want to pause and just take some time and Convince yourself that you're happy with these ratios because these are what we're going to need when we're trying to find the volume of this square based pyramid. All right, now we had the formula for it, it was a third times the base times the. So let's write the formula here so that we know what we're aiming for. A third a squared h, where h is the perpendicular height and a is the side lengths. All right, so to make it a little bit easier to visualize, if we just look at it as a flat surface, this distance is h. Now, if I choose any arbitrary x, that distance is then x. If I choose that arbitrary x, our side length is a. Then I've got to look at the similar triangles to get x in terms of the other variables. Because if I look at a slice, because we're slicing, if I look at a slice, a slice is a square. The area of the slice is a, sorry, is s by s. Where is s? s is this height. So wherever I slice it, it's x units away, but the area of that slice will be s times s. So now we need to get these things in terms of each other because we've got way too many variables here. So we're using similar triangles to see that A over S must be the same as H over X. So therefore S I can have in terms of A, H and X. S is then AX over H. So then when I look at my volume formula, it's the integral from 0 to H of that area. So it's s squared, so it's ax over h squared dx. Now a is a constant, h is a constant, I can take them out. It's a squared over h squared, the integral from naught to h of x squared dx, which is a squared over h squared times the antiderivative of x squared is a third x cubed between h and 0. So that's a squared over h squared times h cubed over 3, which gives us a third a squared h. And that's what we wanted to get. So that's the volume of a square-based pyramid. Now we can follow a similar process for many other shapes. In the next video, we will look at the sphere, but then we will look at solids, finding volumes of solids of revolutions when given a function.